What I've got is three graphs, they're all the same here, and I'm going to apply three different matrices. And what we're going to see is how does applying that matrix transform these different vectors. So my first example is going to be the matrix 2, 0, 0, 2. And what I'm going to do is imagine that this is going to apply to some vector. I'm going to call it the vector with components x1 and x2. And then I can do this multiplication. I know how multiplication works. So what is this? The 2 times the x1 plus a 0 times an x2. That's 2x1 on the top. And then I can go and do the same sort of idea. Uh, 0 times x1 plus 2x2. So a 2x2 on the bottom as well. And Therefore, what I should think has happened is that if my input was this vector x1, x2, the output of it was the vector 2x1, 2x2. And then it happens to be the case that this is algebraically the same thing as just saying twice x1, x2. So really what this linear transformation does is it, it picks up an input, x1, x2, and it, it doubles each component in the output. So now what I'm going to do is I've got these various vectors. Maybe I'll call the first one u, and maybe I'll call the second one v. I just drew two random ones. Of course, there's infinitely many in the plane, and the matrix could have applied to any of them, but I'm just going to take two particular ones. And what it does, if I applied my matrix, is it would double the length. So this u vector would come all the way out here to the vector twice u. And this v vector would go over here to the vector twice v. So that's what my transformation does is it takes that input and it, which is a vector, and it doubles it. By the way, I want to note here that I'm not drawing the graph of a function in the same way that I would back in high school for a function of one input and one output. And the reason is just that our inputs now are two-dimensional and our outputs are two-dimensional, opposed to being one and one. When it was just a single variable for the input and a single variable for the output, you could graph that in two dimensions. But here, because it's two for the inputs and two components for the outputs, to graph it, it would be like this four-dimensional thing. And yeah, maybe we'd be able to do it and visualize it somehow, but it's going to be a pain. So instead, what I just do is I just take a couple input values, the u and the v, and I just show where they're going to go in the output. And they sort of draw the input and the output like directly on top of each other. These output vectors are living on the same plane that the input vectors are living on. So it's a little bit of a, a sneaky move, but I think I can get away with it. All right, next example. I'm going to take this matrix, 0, 1, 1, 0, and I'm going to apply that to x1, x2. And what happens here if I do my multiplication, 0 times x1 is going to be 0, and then I get an x2 up on the top here. And then x1 and 0, I get an x1 on the bottom. So what is this transformation done? Well, it's taken the, the input, which has a first component and a second component, and it flips them. The, the first component becomes the second component, and the second component is going to become the first component. So if I've got my u here and my v here, the sort of way I want to think about this is it's reflecting over that line y equals x. What was horizontal becomes uh, vertical. What was vertical becomes horizontal. So for instance, if I sort of loosely draw my, my line here, this is y equals x, which, which doesn't change at all if you flip. This is like a vector like 2, 2 does not change if you flip it. But this vector, which is beneath the line, it is going to flip and become that vector there. And that's this matrix A applied to u1. It flips it over that diagonal to that point there. And likewise, for the v vector, it's going to flip over this dotted line, and it looks like it's going to be something like this. That is my a applied to my v vector. And maybe just to verify that this makes sense, if I think of my v, that has a negative horizontal component. And then if I look at my av, it is a negative vertical component. And if I look at my v, it's got a positive vertical component. And then if I look at my av, it's got a positive horizontal component. So basically, multiplying by the a just completely reverse the role of what was a horizontal component and what was a vertical component. All right, final one. I'm going to look at this matrix, 1, 1, 0, 1, and I'm going to apply that to the pair x1, x2. And if I do my multiplication, x1 plus x2, 
and zero, and then x2. So it goes like x2 like this. So how does this work? It's kind of an interesting one. Notice that whatever the second component was, it doesn't change. Like the x2 just went to the x2. It's only in the, in the horizontal component, the first component where it changes, your x1 is going to transform to this x1 plus x2. So if I just sort of bring this over here for just a moment, well, if I look at this first vector, the one that we've typically been calling u, I'll label my v over here as well, if I look at my u vector, my output, it does not change its height. It does not change its second component here. So I can, I can sort of dot this in. I know it's going to be somewhere on that line. But then what I'm going to do is, if I've got some height, that's going to look like my uh, x2 here, and that looks like my x1. Well, the sum of those two things is something along the lines looking like about that long. And so that's why I'm going to claim my vector is. Maybe I'll get rid of what I just sort of put on here. And I'm going to claim it's going to be this vector here. So it kept the same second component, but that first component, it, it kept what it had, but it added a little bit more. It had the x1 and it added the x2, so I moved over to this vector. And that's going to be a u. And then if I look at my v here, well, what we're going to do in this one is we're going to keep it same sort of horizontal, so it's going to be somewhere along this line going along up here, but then where does it go to? Uh, it goes to the x1 component it has here, but then it adds to it the x2. It adds to it that height there, which is a positive amount, and so I think it's going to become a vector that looks something like that. That's my a, v. These three different types of transformations are all very uh, standard ones. Uh, the one that we just did is referred to as a shear transformation, where you sort of keep either the horizontal or the vertical, and you, you push it away on the other one side. The one in the middle that we saw that was reflecting over the line y equals x, unsurprisingly, is referred to as a reflection. And finally, the one that we had initially, the multiplication by 2, this is referred to as an expansion. So you either sort of expand out and all of your vectors get longer, or all of your vectors do some sort of flip, or all of your vectors go and shear off in one way. Uh, one other example that's very standard that we haven't seen is vectors that all go and rotate by some angle theta. There's going to be a rotation matrix as well that rotates by any angle theta. We're going to see that a little bit in the future. So where are we at? If we go back to the beginning here, we can see that transformations were just this general idea of having inputs and transforming them into outputs. And then if we look at our specific examples that we have, we've seen three different ways where a matrix can multiply a, a particular input vector, and it transforms the output vectors in these three different ways.